This is the Daily Bread Bible Study. We are looking at day 77 for Judges chapters 14 through 16. Now, we will be focusing on the main character here for uh, these three chapters. We are looking at Samson. And so uh, this man, Samson, or Samson, if you go with a, another translation from the uh, language, is blessed by God from birth. His a barren mother conceived um, is declared to be um, and declares him to be a Nazarite from birth. Now, a Nazarite is a special vow, um, and this child um, is given to God in that vow, and thus should work to maintain the vow his parents made for him to be a Nazarite. So in Judges 13, verse 4, Now be careful not to drink wine or strong drink, or to eat anything unclean. For you shall conceive and bear a son. No razor is to come on his head, for the boy shall be a Nazarite to God from birth. It is he who shall begin to deliver Israel from the hand of the Philistines. So in many ways, there is a consecration upon Samson's head, both in a figurative and a literal sense, as it says in Numbers 6. Uh, all the days as Nazarites, they are holy to the Lord. And in verse 16, then the Nazarites shall shave their consecrated head at the entrance of the tent of meeting and shall take the hair from the consecrated head and put it in the fire under the sacrifice of well-being. So Samson's hair is very important here for the story and for the vow of the Nazarites. Moving back to Judges chapter 14, verse 2. Uh, then he came up and told his father and mother, I saw a Philistine woman at Timnath. Uh, now get her for me as my wife. But his father and mother said to him, Is there not a woman among your kin or among all of your people that you must go and take a wife from the uncircumcised Philistines? But Samson said to his father, Get her for me because she pleases me. And strangely enough, God is planning to use this intermarriage to bring down the Philistines. So in another strange symbolic event in Judges 14, verse 6, he tore the lion apart barehanded. He does not tell his parents. And he turned aside to see the carcass of the lion. And there was a swarm of bees in the body of the lion and honey. So he takes the honey and eats and gives it to his parents, again, not explaining the events to him. So I don't exactly know what is going on here. Uh, is the lion connected with the Philistines? Is honey success? Well, anyways, Samson then turns this event into a riddle, which people accept the bet to explain it within seven days. After three days of failure, the Philistines threaten his wife with destruction and the wife weeps to Samson for three days, which upsets the strong man. <clears throat> he explains the riddle to her, and she tells the Philistines. The Philistines solve the riddle, and then in the anger of Samson's betrayal, he kills the other Philistines so he can pay, uh, uh, pay his bet and uh, storm off. And then the woman's father gives her to another man. So there's all sorts of strange things happening around Samson. Well, it continues on. In Judges 15, after Samson cools down, Samson returns to be with his wife, um, and her father refuses, so Samson proclaims in Judges 15, verse 3, This time when I do mischief to the Philistines, I will be without blame. Uh, either literally or symbolically, Samson uses foxes to burn down the Philistines' crops. Uh, the Philistines inquire about the cause and kill the father and the wife of Samson for the Israelites' retribution. Still upset that he cannot have the woman of his fancy as his wife, Samson takes revenge upon the Philistines by killing more of their inhabitants. So a lot of violence from Samson. Now the conflict continues to escalate. Now seeing a Philistine army confront Judah, asking for them to hand over Samson. The men of Judah come to Samson, who feels he is in the right. In Judges 15, verse 11, As they did to me, so I have done to 
to them. The men of Judah hand over Samson to the Philistines, who taunt Samson. Samson proceeds to break his bonds and take a donkey's jawbone and slays a thousand Philistines. In Judges 15.20, And he judged Israel in the days of the Philistines 20 years. Uh, that's a fun way to judge, taking a donkey's jawbone and slaying a thousand. Now, this could be the ending of the story of Samson, yet the narrative continues into chapter 16, the more familiar, familiar uh, story with Delilah. So in Judges 16, Samson appears as this carnal brute going around the region of the Philistines to sleep with women and create general havoc. In Gaza, he spends the night with a prostitute. The residents seek to kill him, yet he escapes while they sleep, even breaking down the city gate. Samson goes to the valley of Sorek, where he meets Delilah, and he falls in love with her. Sensing the opportunity, the lords of the Philistines bribe Delilah to plot a Samson's downfall. And Delilah, well, she agrees. The devious woman seeks to know what is the source of his strength and what will make the strength disappear. Using his infatuation to her advantage, Delilah asks Samson, and then he responds in Judges 16, verse 7, If they bind me with seven fresh bowstrings that are not dried out, then I shall become weak and be like anyone else. So Delilah binds Samson and then shouts, The Philistines are upon you, Samson! Samson easily breaks the bowstrings, and Delilah becomes upset, saying, You lied to me. So Delilah asks again, Tell me. And Samson replies, Bind me with uh, new ropes, which too do not work. Next, seven locks are tried and broken. And finally, after she had nagged him with, all, with her words day after day and pestered him, he was tired to death. So he told her his whole secret. Uh, a shaved head makes me normal, an obvious parallel to number six, the Nazarite command. Yet again, the hair is in connected with the vow to God. With the secret known, his hair is removed and his strength finally goes. Samson is captured and tortured by the Philistines. They ship him humbled and blinded to Gaza and over time, Samson's hair grows back, thus renewing his Nazarite promise with God and also returning his ability to get strength. In Judges 16, verse 25, And when their hearts were merry, they said, Call Samson and let, us enter let him entertain us. So they called Samson out of the prison, and he performed for them. They made him stand between the pillars. Samson then prays to God. And all of this, all of for Samson's, uh, his, uh, I guess, just his lack of being able to discern many different things. He is able to discern the need for God here. In Judges 16, verse 28, Lord God, remember me and strengthen me only this once, O God, so that with this one act of revenge, I may pay back the Philistines for my two eyes. So he strained with all of his might, and the house fell on the lords and all the people who were in it. So those he killed at his death were more than those he had killed during his life. And again, the same ending is given as was shown in chapter 15. He had judged Israel 20 years. This story of Samson is a wild fantasy. It is something that is really vivid and just uh, a lot of imagery. It is hard to figure out what to make of this story. Yet, in this sense, the point is clear. All consecrated of the Lord can pray in order to overpower obstacles. So I hope that you feel empowered to pray to God um, and to loosen any binds that you might have uh, on yourself or any binds that might have come upon you. So, this is all uh, for our Daily Bread Bible study. We look forward to day 78 next time.